In this uh, tutorial, we are going to generate a, a print layout or a map layout purely for Nigeria without having to add any other extra data to it. So go back to QGIS. Now you have uh, the map of Nigeria within the window. To make sure that within the layouts you have uh, only the map of Nigeria, then you have to deactivate the Anambra map and of course uh, the rasters within the window so you deactivate them by clicking on the box before now that's deactivated study area deactivates so the only active uh, uh, map within the window is uh, the Nigeria map that has a uh, uh, the different colors, but I still want to have the Nigeria map with the labels the one where I dissolve the local the, the, the local governments and have only the states So to get that in you activate that that uh, map which is w, wb underscore Nigeria dot map So now that maps back So I want to generate a map layout for this of course, in the tutorial, you get to find out. You'll find out that um, in the tutorial, talk about uh, layout. So, a typical map layout, the component should be. You should have a title. It might have a logo, depending on uh, whether it's a project sponsored by an organization. So you need to put their logo, their university logo, as the case may be. Not really important. It, does, it doesn't really matter that much. But it should have a title. It should have a not arrow. You should have a legend telling you what each color represents. You should have a scale bar telling you whether it's one is to one or uh, one is to ten thousand. You should have supplementary text with maybe some other basic information like the coordinate system. Credit, if you are talking about maybe uh, you got money, a grant from an organization to conduct the research, you give them credit and say, okay, the money came from so and so and so and all of that. I think that's what this talks about. The border, the lines. So basically, these are components of uh, a good map layout. So we'll try to practically uh, bring those uh, these uh, into bear when designing the map layout for Nigeria. So to begin, go to projects, projects on uh, the menu bar. It brings out a context menu. You go down to layouts, new print layouts, select that. It brings out this box within the window. This pop-up window, you have to define the name, give a name to the print layout before the print layout can open. So in this case, I would call it um, uh, Nigeria ADM underscore NG ADM underscore NG let's call maybe cartography agm underscore ng underscore cartography any choice anything you any name you give it mine is admin map of nigeria and of course, this is a cartography tutorial for you guys. So that's why cartography is there. It's just a first map. So there you click OK. And now this is the print layout, the window. This is different from this. But whatever I do here is a function of what is happening within the window. So whatever is happening within this, in this window, in the print layouts, the new layouts, print layouts, uh, I'm trying to represent what is within QGIS in a way that 
when I give that map, when I print that map on paper or send it to somebody in a document, he will be able to read off and say, okay, this is what this is all about. He wouldn't need me to be there to say, okay, the uh, red is so and so, blue is so and so, this line represents a river. At a glance, he just looks at that map and he knows what it's all about. So that's what uh, the, 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 the map layout gives you. It gives you some other uh, information that uh, will enable you to understand what the map actually represents. So the first thing you do to, is to import the map with the, into the window. But what about uh, the size? What is what about the size of the paper? If you click on this layout, you may not be able to know the size. Like in terms of, let's say, uh, is it A4, A3? To get there, just right click and say page properties. Right click within page properties, and that brings you here where you have item properties so you have the size is a4 it is landscape in orientation the width is so and so the height is so and so so these are just properties of uh, the the window so now you know that you're working with a4 now you have to import the map whatever is selected within the map window is what will be imported that's why i have to deactivate all the ones that i don't want to show up so you come within these are the tools that will enable you to work a few of them you'll use most often than not they are still basically the same kind of tools you see within the map window and in some gis so for now what is selected is the the arrow key with which you can hold you can select hold and all of that but this is what is selected now to import a map this this tool here add map once you move the cursor and hold it on top of a tool, it will tell you what it is. So I want to add a map. So this is the tool for adding map, add map. Click on it. Click within the map window, hold, drag to an extent and the map shows up. Like I said, what showed up is basically what is within the map window. What was not active or what was not uh, deactivated. So now you can see that all the region within an umbra state that had some extra data those extra data are not there it's just purely uh, the map, my map of nigeria so what we'll do is we'll work with this map of nigeria and generate a map for this map of nigeria so that let's say for instance you have a project and you want to produce a map of nigeria and make it available to somebody you can this is how you do it so subsequently it becomes more complex because we'll now start generating maybe two maps within the window so this is the same place it can be you can hold on this corner drag up to fill up the window somewhat so now that it's here you can use a scale to increase the size or reduce the size now if you come here it's still on layout so i want i don't want to go on layout i want to go on the item properties click on item properties tab here and you're here so the scale is basically one is to six million two hundred and four thousand eight hundred and ninety five i want to increase the scale the way to increase scale is not, not to increase the number but to increase to decrease the number once you decrease the number is this is basically one is to this so when you say one is to just like you say one over four is loyal is less than one over two one over two is half one over four is one quarter so one is to a large number gives you a smaller scale one is to a smaller number gives you a larger scale so this is basically the idea so now you this is six million let me make this six million and uh, remove the fraction on top of it one two three four five six zeros press enter you can see the size increased somewhat but not high enough so let's make it five million eight hundred five eight enter another increase let's make it five million remove the eight Mm, yep, I think we can stop stop here in terms of uh, 
uh, the increments now bear in mind that uh, as it is once you want to move this once you click and hold you are moving the entire map around so once you move around and you don't want to you want to you can still do control z to undo what you just did now this is the map layout now what are the things that need to be on this map for it to just like you see maps online it needs to have uh grids where you have the longitude on the horizontal the latitude on the vertical it's not yet here you need a legend which talks about what does each color represent which color is an umbra state which color is emo state you need to have a legend you need to have, to have a scale that says this is one is two all of these things are things that should be part of any typical map and those must be part of the map layout without those your map is virtually meaningless you can make meaning of this map but then when you produce a raster map what does a raster map mean it means nothing if it if the if, if the map properties are not there to tell the person who's reading the map that okay this is a map of morphology and not a map of elevation so basically that's something that should be there but um if you want to move this map with the this map with this map with the map within and not the map window there's another tool you select for now this is selected you select this tool which is basically move item content select that you can hold and drag this map without dragging the the pane within which it's located you drag it up you can drag it wherever because the the tool for dragging the uh, the content of the map is selected once the tool is not selected once the tool for dragging the map or the item itself is selected then you cannot make those movements you have to move the entire uh map itself with the window so undo again and now we're here uh haven't come to this point let's add the grid lines to add grids the map you have to select the map there are tools on this pane this is item properties now selected you want to add grids to the grid lines the longitude and latitude so you do that from this part the scale right now is uh, 4 thousand four million nine hundred and ninety nine and all of that thousand so these are properties you can amend so you get to grids this is what you want to change click on the drop down arrow click on plus now a grid is loaded this grid that is loaded doesn't have anything within it so you have to modify it to suit your need click modify grid and that window is loaded now i want to the grids for here is the grid type is solid coordinate reference system i'll still use uh, the parent coordinate reference system but i can still change this from here uh, map units the intervals you use the map units but then let's start with the grid type it's solid for now i'll still change it once you click the arrow i will eventually change it to uh, frames and annotation but let's leave it as solid we will still uh, come back there the important thing is to define the the the, the intervals that's uh, the x and the y so what is the interval what is the range let's say the interval is let's make it um it's in degrees i think the is a uh, in decimal degrees that's what uh, you have in terms of uh, the coordinates so let's say you have a uh, five no i want to make it five so i've typed in five on that x and mind you x should be on the x-axis which is basically the longitude the longitude is this but for 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 this uh computations the longitude is x the latitude is y so the x five once i click within 
the space for uh, y, you see the change is made. Five. Five is too, too few, is too large. Let me make it um, 2.5. 2.5. Now I have more grid lines. So for the latitudes on Y, let's make it 2.5 and see what it looks like. Can press enter. So this is basically what uh, the grid grid lines look like. So when I add the coordinates, the the, the coordinates uh, on the sides, then you see what it looks like. Now, having inserted the grids, you go down, uh, you want to have the longitude and latitude indicator too. Scroll down. The offset we may not use at the moment, just ignore it. So, on that frame, frame under frame now frame style no frame click on this select interior and exterior tick i need a line outside of the map on those grid lines i need the line to extend outside until extend within a bit so select interior and exterior ticks you can see that the line has extended a bit outside the map now frame frame margin leave those intact so scroll down further now grid rotation no need for that i need to draw the coordinates so select draw coordinates on that draw coordinates, select this, uh, click on this box to activate. Now, automatically, it has given you the coordinates for each uh, each uh, point, each of those grid lines. But I want it to be defined, defined in such a way that I know we, where I, I will have a longitude latitude. So, longitude maybe 2.5 or 2.5 um, degrees north or 2.5 degrees south, let's know which is which. And of course, I want it to be decimal, to be rather um, degrees, minutes, seconds. So what you have right now is simply decimal degrees. So on that format, you have decimal. So select, click on the drop down arrow, select degrees, minutes, and seconds. It's your choice. You can select degrees and minutes. You can select uh any other thing but i want to select uh, degrees minutes seconds and suffix that's whether it's n or or s not or south i want to be able to know which one is a it is but if i select degrees minutes and seconds it gives me degrees minutes and seconds without telling me whether it's uh, north or south so degrees minutes and seconds along with the suffix tells me now okay this is degrees east and this is degrees west so this is basically what you see here now when you scroll down further you discover that there is a an anomaly here per se my numbers extend far beyond uh, the map window so i want this number to be oriented vertically this one should be oriented horizontally like it is, but the latitude should be oriented vertically so that it will, be, it will fall within the map, uh, the map uh, window and not beyond it. Just like the same for east and west. So um, if you get down to below format, you see left here. What is on the left is uh, this numbers on the left now. You have what is selected there is horizontal in terms of orientation. Click on that and select vertical ascending. So you see the change. Then for the right, select vertical descending. 
So you see it's now within the map window. It makes the map more uh, meaningful. Scroll further down. Uh, you can change the font size of that. So select, click on font, or you can click on this to get font color. But uh, once you click on on top of font itself, not a drop down arrow, click on top of font, and then it brings out this. So let's increase increase the font. Let's leave it at ten, but let's make it bold. So on the regular, select bold. Uh, you can still change the font type, change the font color, but we'll leave that. Then to go back, click on this uh, uh, backward pointing arrow here, and now you're back here. Now the next thing I want to have a grid. I want to have a, a line. This line I want to be it to be defined when I deselect. So. I think we've defined the coordinates as is. No, not yet. Let me do something else. Now, you notice that you have three decimal places. I want to decrease these three decimal places to two decimal places. Coordinate precision is three here. So reduce it to two. You can press enter. And then you have two decimal places. So that's selected. I think I'm done with the coordinate system. So click backwards. No, I'm not yet done. Like I said, you have this grid. And this is solid grid. I want, I don't want all these lines within the map. They clog up the map. They make it uh, not good to look at. And of course, they're not even easy to read. So scroll back up. This solid needs to be changed. The grid type. I want frame and annotation only click on that and the lines within disappear so this is how i want the map to be so i haven't done that go back and then you come back to the the main where you started defi defining the grid so the grid is already de defined i want the if i deselect the frame when i select outside or when i want to print this line here may not show up so I want the line to show up. Meanwhile, okay, it wasn't able to click outside because this is still selected. So let's click on select and move item. Once I click outside, you see the line is not there. I need for that line to be solidly, solidly, there, solidly there. So once I click within, I can still drag this in such a way that it centers. So now that you have this centered, in this way i want to make sure the line is there scroll down frame select frame it's not selected now once you click you can change the color the thickness and all of that but i'll leave it the way it is so if i click outside now the line is still intact and it's there so click within and the and the settings show show back up so basically, I've added the grids, I've added longitude and latitude. Now let's now add uh, all the uh, other attributes that need to be there for the map to be useful to somebody else. Now click add item on the, uh, the, the tools uh, bar, you click add, add item. I want to add... Um, You can see that there are lots of things you can add. I want to add a scale bar now. Click on that. You come within. You can click within and drag. The scale bar shows up. You can hold, move up. You can format the scale bar to suit your needs. Your choice. So to format this, I want to have... Uh, the interval for now is 0 to 100, 100 to 200. I want to have 100, 0 uh, to 100, 200, about 5 bars. So to do that, you can still change the format of this uh, box. If 
you check the scale now, it's just like this. I can decide to make it double. Single box is the format now. Double box, you can see the pattern has changed. Now it's there. I can change the unit to something else, but I'll leave it at kilometers. Uh, ignore this for now. Kilometers km. Now, how many of these lines do I want on the left side? I want one. For now, it's zero. So left, I want one. So you can now see you have 100, 0, 100, 200. How many do I have ones on the right? For now, I see I have two. I want to have... You click on this, the up arrow to increase. Now I have four of them. So that's the scale bar now I'm brought into the map window. Now, the geographic coordinate system that I'm using is basically WGS84. And it's necessary that you define that so that whoever is reading the map, if the specialist knows uh, the coordinates, whether it's projected or Cartesian. So you come whether it's a projected or the actual geographic coordinates. Click Add Texts. You can add different kinds of texts. But once you click, you click um, Add Label for now. Add Label. And you come within and draw a box. That's basically a text box where you can type something in. So now that it's there, you can select within this window and type in geographic coordinate system. Geographic coordinate system. Column WGS84. WGS. 84. So uh, you can still format this further. You can see if you check the text box here, the text is somewhat smallish, tiny, and it still seems to be tilted towards uh, the left. I want it to be centered. So you click on this center and click on this center too. So you see it's within the center of the box now. It's now centered. Um, what else can I do with that? You can scroll down or before you scroll down, let's say I want to increase the font or change the font. I click on top of this. You can click on the arrow, but you might get some limited uh, uh, application applicability, but click on top to, br to bring out a larger window where you can now make your amendments. You can change the font format. I want it to be sans serif, for instance. MS sans serif, select this. 10 still, maybe bold. And say OK. You can see that it's become bolder. So I'll leave that. think um, that's basically good enough for now. Click within. Now that's what you have. So you can click on this and use your pointer to move it down. So that's that for geographic coordinates for the scale and then the grid. We need to add something else. Go to add item still. The not arrow. Where is the not arrow here? Um, add, add, add arrow. Um, is it the arrow I'm looking for? Nope, this is not the arrow I'm looking for. I'm looking for, it, for the not arrow. Yep, add not arrow. Click on that. Let's say I want the not arrow to be here. So you click drag. And that's the not arrow then. So it just talks about where is the not of that map. If I were to change the orientation of the map, that not arrow, not, not arrow, the, the not arrow will also change to reflect the twisting of the map. But I am not difficult. I'm not changing the orientation that's why it's still pointing upwards if i change it such that nigeria is now pointing leftward then the map will also change and point leftward so that you know that the, the arrow is not upwards it's sideways so but in this case it's pointing upwards because i didn't change i didn't disfigure the nigeria map so you leave it as is i can now decide to add title add 
add non-legend is yet add label i can say okay add text for instance what kind of text do i want to add project parts lots of different things project parts blah 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 current username anyway let me use add label still you can click within and say select this administrative map of nigeria let me make it capital add me miss creative map of nigeria so now that you have that typed in you can still center it you can still make it bold and then you can increase the font size to let's say 24 how bad is that maybe too bad let's make it 20 say okay mm, now some things have disappeared so you have to hold within hold this on the corner or in the center it turns to a double pointed arrow you drag left or right administrative map of So already running into issues, no space for the map. So you can change, you select the map itself. I want to now change the scale, reduce the scale so that there will be room for the title. So it's now at four, increase it to five, five, five million two hundred thousand. Let's see, five. Two zero 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 zero. Enter. Let's make it. Um, well, yeah, I think I do. This will do. So you go back to the corner, select the one, the other, uh, the move uh, item contents, select that, and then hold on the map and move it downwards. So that once you let it go, you can now center the title. Now go back to select item, select this and move it. No, nope, I'm not trying to reduce, increase. Select and move it such that it's centered. You can see when it comes to center, there's a line that shows up, let go. So this is basically the map with the title you can change your orientation as you so desire now i think uh, the legend is now paramount it needs to come in add item add legend this is where you run into a couple of issues once you click add legend you come in you drag as usual and a lot of things will show up so it might take a long time because now it's not going to be selective on what uh, is within the map window it's going to load everything within that qgis uh, uh, document so once it loads everything you now have to edit and remove the ones that are not relevant so that's why it might take a, a bit of a time to load all of that so basically this is your map taking shape the map layout so Whoever sees the map, even if it is not a Nigerian, knows, okay, this is the administrative map of uh, uh, Nigeria. Uh, this is the scale. Mm, this is uh, the longitude and the latitude, the range. Okay, the map is pointing upwards, and now we're going to add a legend so that the person can also say, okay, ah, these are the states. Even without the labels, he knows which state is which based on the legend. Now it has loaded uh, the legend at this point you cannot really make any adjustments within the level because there's something there that says auto update is activated so to manually update the legend you have to deactivate auto uh auto uh, auto update so click to deselect might take a short while because now a lot of things were loaded there 
so once it's uh, deactivated then we can individually eliminate a lot of uh, the symbols there nope still not there yeah it's coming taking quite a while quite a while So it's now deactivated, it's no longer selected. Something you should do, click save here. So that whatever happens, because sometimes uh, QGIS can go crazy, just shut itself down. It means uh, all that you've done so far will be somewhat wasted. So you keep saving. Right now we haven't saved. And so if anything happens right now that is trying to uh, pull a stunt, then it means when you begin again, you have to start afresh. But Let's hope nothing crazy happens and then I can save and we now continue. Because apparently it's going haywire. So now it's back. Click save. So you've saved that. Now let's now edit this. I want to get rid of this group so once you select click minus remove selected item still going to take time because apparently there are a whole lot of things that are tied into the this particular document that we're working with because uh, we have a whole lot of raster thrown into it so it has to reorganize now it's gotten rid of that the only thing we need in terms of legend is <clears throat> not the names of the local government but just the names of the states <clears throat> so every other item within this map this uh this uh legend uh, window has to go we just retain only one map there and then it will now give us uh what's each color represents in terms of uh, what the map uh, uh, is meant to is meant to kind of uh, portray to whoever wants to read it. Come on, go in here, wire. So. I want to get rid of this, but I think uh, the reason why we are having this problem is all this raster here. Let's get rid of the raster, all of them. None of them is uh, uh, relevant. The only thing relevant there is the Nigeria. Okay. The Nigeria map there. Okay, let's get rid of from here. Scroll down to the bottom. Hold your shift key. Select the last. The only thing that is relevant here in this... Uh, is uh, the Nigeria map with uh, the the colors defined? So click the minus to get rid of everything at the same time. So now it's faster because all those heavy documents that are creating the problems are gone. So and you can also see that it reflected within the legend. So click on this to show everything. I can now hold this and move it up. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, I might run into issues because too many things to represent. So what do I do? How do I go about it? So it means I might need to have two rows of uh, this. So first and foremost, the title is long. So I'll have to edit that. So double click on it. And it brings out this uh, tool to edit. So I type in uh, Nigeria. Nigeria. Oh, not Nigeria. Ooh, ah. Nigeria. So the arrow pointed back. 
So now you have Nigeria as the title, you have lots of local governments. FCT is still federal capital, ter capital territory. I hope this is the appropriate map. Where is Abia? Okay, let's go down to FCT, double click on FCT. I want it to be called FCT, you can say in brackets, uh, Buja. Go back. So, better. So, I might need to have two rows of the legend to be able to work because apparently it's too large. Now, to make this work, I might need to go back to uh, move items within selection. No. Select first. Then this. Move it towards the other end. So select this and then I can maneuver and have maybe two rows. If I scroll down, so let's just say this. Let's have two rows of this. Now, let's duplicate, duplicate this. Right click and select. Uh, think uh, duplicates, copy, maybe paste. You've copied, let's say control V. Now I have two of those in there. I want to have them side by side. Edit so that So, like I was saying before, I into some hitches. This is a, we had duplicated the copied the legend and use Control V as a shortcut to paste the legend again. So, so uh, this is a way of uh, splitting the legend into two, into, two, into two so that it gets into the map window or else it won't really get in because there are too many items that need to be brought into the map. So, haven't pasted that. I now had to edit what the first one so that uh, from Abia to the FCT and then beyond FCT everything was uh, deleted so that uh, it will now continue with the second row that was uh, copied and pasted. So furthermore you can now still edit the fonts of uh, the first legend at least I need uh, for the title to be bold. So I haven't selected that. You scroll down to fonts. Um, should we get here spacing symbols? Click on symbols. Not exactly what I need. I don't need a frame item ID. Okay, font. Font and text formatting. Click on that Tart title font, click on top of it and select bold. Uh, make it um, 14 in size. Oh well, make it 14. See what it looks like. Say OK. Now that title has not yet shown up, so let's add a title. Title, type in legend in caps. Legend. You see the legend has a, a different uh, tint to it. Go back down. So for the title, the group title, I want Nigeria to be bold. So click on that, select bold, 
still four teams, let's say. Bulge. Subgroup. Not necessarily leave that at uh, 12, not bold. And then the items still leave it at 12, not bold. Okay. Now, having done that, I need to kind of uh, generate some space. And I want uh, to reduce the space in between the legend and the, the key, the actual content. So scroll down. Uh, let's deactivate this symbols, columns. Nope, symbols, space in here. Say legend title 3.5. Let's make it 2.5. 2.5. Yes. Make it 1.5. So that spacing is quite adequate. So that's that for the first half. Now you can still move this upward a bit. So for the second column, once you select it, Item properties, Abia, scroll down to FCT, right click hold, delete. Now it has been deleted. Save that. Click hold, drag down. Now you can't have Nigeria twice, so for the second scroll up, then I right double click, delete this Nigeria, go back, nope, so I delete it. Let's see, you should bring it, so I delete it. Anyway, just hide, hidden, select hidden. Don't delete, there's always another way. So, then move down a bit, select this, move up a bit. So, that's basically the legend capturing the states, and of course. The way they are representing in terms of uh, the color of uh, uh, the polygons. So I think basically with this map, anybody who sees it will understand what it's all about. So um, if you export this map, then you are good to go. So the first task would be virtually done. So is there any other thing that needs to be added? You go to items. 3D scale bar. So basically, this is your first task and it's done. So in the next task, we'll have two maps within the map window. We'll have the Nigeria map with all, with the grid sets with a scale bar. And then we'll have the map of one state, maybe uh, Anambra state within the same print window so that you see where within Nigeria is coming from. And of course, the more details will now be within Anambra State because that will be now be the, 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 the bone of contention, the focus. Because right now you can see that Anambra is very small here. You can't really see any details uh, about the states. Even when you add the grid, the, 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 um, if you add the, the, grid, the, the grid data, the grid data, the raster data, you won't really be able to see, see, see the details. So we have, in Nigeria map showing Nigeria being small and then Anambra will be blown out such that you can now see the details within the landmass represented by uh, the map. So um, that will be the next step 
in this case you save this and then know that uh, if you close this subsequently let's close this to reopen that and then make your printout when you're ready is you go back to project go down to this time not new print layout but to layout manager click on that it brings out this pop-up window you can see nigeria there so when you right double click on, the, on it it will open if you click show it's still open so the map is there waiting to be printed or converted to pdf we'll get there subsequently um we might still want to use this like i mentioned somewhere where you talk about how to duplicate a map and then use it as a baseline data we'll get there subsequently but for now i think um we'll uh, stick with this uh when we commence we'll now talk about how to duplicate and then subsequently how to get uh, the extra data into the picture but there is something else we need to do let's say you open that map window i want to make sure that whatever is here once uh, i open something else wouldn't change now if i do anything let's say i bring in another map reduce this and then maybe do some amendments then some of these changes would automatically happen so i want to ensure that most, not, no, no undue changes happen in that case i'll have to select this lock layers lock layers so that if i display like let's say within the map window now what is the reason why you have this map here is because it's displayed within, it's displayed within the qgs map window if i remove this if i deselect this map let's try it let's see how it goes let's say within the map window i deselect this map i deselect deactivate this it's no longer there i have this one that is playing with just the state let's see what happens within qgis within the map window it's gone but if it were locked it won't go out now let's bring it back it's back now that it's back nothing happens but click unlock unlock it's back so now that i've locked it even if i deactivate this it will remain intact it will still be within the map window no matter what but once i deact once it's not locked then chances are if i'm trying to generate a new map what is within this map will disappear so especially this is especially true when you are trying to combine two maps within the, the same print uh, window so if i have two maps then it means once i if i don't lock this and i'm trying to add a second map then what i have here will disappear and what i am trying to add in the second map will be what is in the first so that's something you need to know so you need to be sure that once you've generated a map and you want to combine two maps lock that uh window lock that layer so that's that's safe and then of course uh close we'll stop here for now of course activate this stop